Okay, I'm going to switch over now. You should be seeing my screen. And uh, once again, welcome everyone to today's episode of Luminar Live. Today I'm going to be talking about what Luminar is all about. And I'm using a, I want to mention that I'm using a beta version of Luminar 2018. So what you see in here, a couple things might change. Uh, they, um, I have found a couple bugs in here too. So uh, hopefully we won't have any of those pop up here too. But just want to let you know that, uh, you know, this isn't the final version. It's not going to be shipped for a few more weeks so I uh, just wanted to give you that little disclaimer so this video here that I'm going to be talking about or this Luminar live that I'm going to be talking about today is really for those who are new to you Luminar and also for those who are considering upgrading to it too I'm going to sort of compare both versions the old and the new and give a sort of an overview on the whole program and also highlight a bunch of the things that are new and there's a couple cool things that haven't really been talked about a whole lot yet so right now we're taking a look at the interface for 2018 and I'm going to switch over and just show you a comparison of 2017. You can see that 2018 definitely looks a little bit more like Aurora HDR 2018. One thing that stands out right here in the background, um, the background here is Luminar 2017. You can see my, it gives me a sample image, so it's showing me my file info on the photo. That's been moved and streamlined over here into the upper right hand corner inside of Luminar 2018. You can go ahead and hide some of that information or let it show again. We can see that I'm, I have a raw file that's open in here right now that's shot at ISO 4000 with a 546 millimeter lens and so on. Taking a look along the top on the toolbar, a couple things have changed over here. In the upper left hand corner is where you can open images and also get to batch processing. So you can do batch processing inside of Luminar. You were able to do that in 2017 as well. We got our standard zoom in and zoom out controls over here. This will give you a before and after previews of your photo. We have history up on top here where you can just click and go anywhere in back in back in time on when you were working on your photo. Uh, we had that in 2017 as well. Now we're going to start looking at some of the important changes and I'm going to move my window on 2018 and take a look here now we have an icon for tools and this is now where our crop, transform, clone and stamp and erase tools reside. In Luminar 2017 we can see on the right hand side that's where they were and you'll notice that uh, there's a, a denoise tool that we had in 2017. That is not a tool anymore in 2018. Actually, that's a brand new filter. And in yesterday's video, I talked about new filters inside of 2018, but I actually didn't talk about denoise, and I'm gonna talk about that one today. Uh, up over here, they changed the icons to show and hide the presets and also to show and hide the right-hand panel. And over here in the right-hand side, they moved this uh, share image icon. They had to move this over to the right-hand side to sort of fall in line with uh, with programs that are on Apple Apple's system on, on the Mac. So most of the programs, you'll see this over here on the right-hand side. So that's why they moved this. Now, when you click on the, let's get that again. When you click on the share image, I wanna show you a difference here. So we have, uh, we can export to the image here. We can also bring it to messages, uh, Twitter and Facebook and whatnot, but we also have an open in dialogue on the bottom there And I just want to go and show you the difference here in 2017 We had the export to image and then just the regular share to things So this is something brand new in 2018 that I don't think anyone's really mentioned yet before But if I click on open in we can now send this if you have any of the creative uh, kit suites or if you have Aurora 2000, uh, right now it says Aurora 2017, it'll eventually say 2018, remember this is a beta version. But check this out towards the bottom here. You can now send this photo to Aperture or Photoshop Elements, Lightroom and Photos. So this is really cool, especially if you want to be using Luminar as a base editing program. And I did a, uh, I sent this over to Photoshop and I just want to point out something. It's sending it over as a 16-bit TIFF and another cool thing is that it's keeping all your metadata in here too, including any captioning and keywords that you might have had inside your file. So that's a really cool feature that, uh, you know, if you're going to be sending photos from Luminar directly to Photoshop or to any of these programs, you don't have to export it. You can just send it directly over to that program. 
Okay, on the right hand side is where all the action happens. And the way Luminar works is that it has a whole bunch of filters and there's about four, I think it's like 41 different filters that are inside the program. And if you click on add filters, you'll be able to take a look and see all of these. The ones that you see that are in orange, those are ones that I've highlighted and selected as a favorite. And you can just click on the star icon and that will make it a favorite for you. And you can scroll down here and see all the different filters up on top here. There's uh, uh, shortcuts for favorites. Click on that. Here's all your favorites that are listed right there. Uh, recent, essentials, and so on. And what you do to get these, to start working on these filters, is you just pick any of the ones that you want to work on. So if I wanted to adjust the brightness and contrast, I'll select the brightness and contrast. If I wanted to grab the accent AI filter, click on that. And maybe I wanted to do some curves and let's say dehaze. And then I can close this filters dialog box out. Now on the right hand side, I can do all my adjustments. I can go ahead and brighten up this image, add a little bit of contrast. And notice when I started doing that, this the title of the filter that I was using changed to orange. So whenever you're looking in your filter stack, anything that's in orange, you'll know that that has an adjustment made. If it's still in white, no adjustments have been made to it. You can go ahead and make other adjustments down the line here. And if this is something, you know, all of these filters, let's say all of these filters is something that you always, you know, it's like your go-to filters that you always use on every single photo. If you click over here where it says custom, you can save that as a new workspace. And the workspace is a collection of all of the filters that you want to work on. And it's a really cool tool. I, I haven't saved a whole bunch here yet, but I have a couple key ones that I use for my landscape photos. And there's like maybe about 15 filters that I might, may or may not use on those. And so I save that as a particular uh, workspace. Uh, you can see here that uh, Luminar comes with some already set up. And you know, if I click on quick and awesome, what it's gonna do anytime you change your workspace, it is gonna wipe out all your filters. So I'll just click on the quick and awesome and you can see that these are the filters that are used inside of that. I'm gonna go back to my history because I wanna keep all those filters that I had here. Uh, let's see here, so um, save in your workspace. Uh, let's see here, so I saved a workspace that was new filters 2018 and this is going to show you all the filters that are inside of 2018. And we can see here, we got the, uh, the sun rays. Um, I know a lot of people have been doing some demos on the sun rays. This is a really cool filter. It's not gonna work in this photo though, cause there's no sun. There. So we'll get the uh, sun rays off of the moose. But here are the other filters. And in yesterday's video, I talked about these, the matte look, the LUT mapping, hue shift. Uh, I didn't talk about denoise. I will talk about that in a little bit. Dodge and burn and the raw development. And the raw development filter, uh, it says raw develop because I'm working on a raw file. If I was working on a regular file like a TIFF or a JPEG or a PSD, it would just say develop. There's new inside of 2018 is lens corrections and transforming so you can change the perspective of the photo. And uh, let's see here. So when you're working on your photo and let's say you make a whole bunch of adjustments and I'll just do a couple quick things here. Uh, not really for any rhyme or reason, but just to get a couple, uh, let's see here. I don't want to do a hue shift and we'll just do a uh, matte look on this. When you have a look that you like on here, you know, with all the settings that you've done with your filters, you can click on save filters preset and that's going to save it as a preset. Now this is really cool here too. Inside of uh, 2018, this is new, 2017 didn't give you this option. When you click on save filters preset, it's going to list all the filters that you had stacked up in this um, in your filters panel. Now notice how I didn't use denoise and I didn't use hue shift. If I want to save the preset on only the things that I say, that I made adjustments on, I can just uncheck those. And then when I save my preset, it's going to save the ones, just the filters that I want to need. So next time I use that preset, it'll load those. And so let's let's talk about presets here. Because down on the bottom here, they change this a little bit. And if we take a look at 2017, we had the presets going around and they came all the way over into the right. And we had this uh, big, huge uh, circle to click on to get the different categories on the presets. They streamlined that a lot, um, a lot better now. And it's very similar to Aurora 2018, where now they stay just in the bottom here. They don't interfere with your uh, filters. And you can just go ahead and click on a preset. Let me show you the categories too. So the categories pop up from the categories uh, tab right on the bottom there. 
When you're working on a preset, you select a preset, and then on the right-hand side, you'll see all the filters that were used in creating that preset. And I, you know, I, I read the forums online, and you know, I know uh, a lot of people think that some of the presets are a little too strong in, you know, let's say Aurora 2018. I've heard that a little bit. Um, probably not as strong in here because this isn't an HDR program. But whenever a filter is too strong, there's a lot of different ways you can go ahead and adjust that. One is by sliding the amount slider down here. Now I can't show you this in 2018 because this is where I found one of those bugs. But I'll just show you in 2017 how this works. It's going to work the same way once the uh, once the full version is shipped. So I, select, uh, I selected Image Enhancer, and now by adjusting this amount slider, I can back off on the intensity of that filter. So then I don't have to be committed to this you know, huge, powerful filter that may, you know, may be giving me too much color, too much uh, whatever in there. I can back off on the amount. Really powerful feature. I'm going to go back here into 2018 because there's other, other ways that you can adjust the strength of the presets as well. And that's by going over onto the right hand side and going into the individual um, filters themselves. And you know I can see here that they increased the shadows 100 on, the, on this photo. If I just back off on that, let's say I didn't want to have that at 100, I can just back off on that and make some other adjustments as well. Now any of these adjustments that I've been doing have been global adjustments. A huge strength of Luminar is being able to do localized adjustments too. And we can go down here and let's say I wanted to give some structure and I only wanted to have structure in the moose to bring out a little bit more detail. If I click on the structure amount and increase that, we'll see that that's being applied to the entire image. I don't want to do that. I want to have it just being applied to certain areas in the image like the, like the face here. If I click on this brush icon in, inside the name, right along to the right of the name, if I click on that, I now have an option of brush, radial mask, gradient mask, or I can make luminosity mask in here too. I want to use the brush, so I'll click on the brush. And oh, we'll try that again. Looks like I might have had a little bit of a freeze here. Yep. Okay. Told you, beta software. Every once in a while, you're going to have a little bit of a... Uh, glitch. It's probably going a little bit slow. I'm just going to force quit it and load it right back up here. Okay. And in the meantime, if anyone has any questions, feel free as I'm loading this up to uh, post them in the comments. I'll take a look and see if I see anything uh, popping up here. Let's uh, open that file back up. I'm not seeing any questions here yet, but uh, yeah, any questions, go ahead and fill them out, you know, type them into the comments area. If I don't get to them live on, on air here, I'll be able to do those uh, after the show has ended. Okay, so let's get back to bright day and let's see if this will work now. So I'm going to increase the structure amount and I'll click on that brush and I'll select brush. There we go. Perfect. And then up on top here, I have brush uh, tools. Now, if I clicked, it, right now, you, if you notice my brush is in the positive, it has a positive in the circle there, a little plus sign. That means if I start painting anywhere, it's going to start applying the structure just to that area. If I had this on erase, that means it's going to erase the structure from this. Now, I'm not going to want to use the erase on this one because I'd have to erase all over here and do this. I'd rather just paint in the effect of the structure. So I'm going to click on paint in. I will lower my brush size a little bit and I'll leave the opacity at 100. And then I'll just start clicking and painting. And what this is now doing is it's applying the structure just to the face of the moose. I can come up over here and click on the mask icon and what's red that means that that is having the effect applied to it. Over here on the left there's some more ma mask enhancement tools where I can adjust the density, I can adjust the feather of it as well. So this is hugely powerful and it's something that I use a ton of in my photos to make localized adjustments. Not only that, but we have layers here too. So we have a full layers workflow. And in the upper right hand corner on layers, uh, let me just hit done on that adjustment. Over here, I can click on layers and add a new adjustment layer. If I did that, that zeroes out all my filters. Now all my filters are still here on what I was using. They're on my base layer. But now on this new layer, I can start from scratch again and I can add a new uh, preset to it. Or let's say I just wanted to do the brilliance and warmth. I can come in here and add that as well. Adjustment layers I use a ton. Now I did want to talk about the denoise filter. Let's go ahead and grab that denoise filter 
and we'll apply that and when I'm using the denoise I like to zoom in to hundred percent because that's you know that's when you're gonna really be able to see the noise in the photo and see this filter take an effect okay so now that I'm at hundred percent I have controls is a little bit different than what we had in 2017 I have a luminosity a color control and a boost uh, I'll just bring up this luminosity and we'll bring that up about halfway and we can see how that's doing a great job already on the noise maybe a little too strong if I back that off and it looks like I might have a little bit of color noise in there I'll increase the color slider just a little bit and perfect look did a great job on the noise in the background not too crazy about the face though I've lost a little bit of sharpness so how do we take care of that easy just grab the brush and we'll click on brush again and this time I want to erase it from the face so opposite of what I was doing with the structure I'll click on the erase and I'll leave it at hundred percent opacity and I'll start painting in on the moose's face up here and painting in on the little ones down over here as well I can take a look at my mask and if I missed any areas I can go in here and let's go in just real quick just like that and perfect and if I hit done now I've taken care of all the noise in the background all where it's really important to get rid of that left it in the face you're not really going to see the noise because there is a lot of detail on that face usually you're going to see the noise in like a blue sky or because this background is so out of focus you're seeing the noise a lot more prominent inside there I'm going to take a quick peek right now and see if uh let's see what we got for questions here um okay uh, Jack is asking if you want to send your work to Lightroom which version does it go to okay uh, good question Jack I'm actually gonna be talking about workflow um, I believe tomorrow and tomorrow's uh, uh, Luminar live so I'm gonna wait to answer that until tomorrow if that's okay uh, Michael at launch will 2018 read in all existing 2017 presets automatically good question not sure about that yet don't know the answer to that I haven't tested it out yet on my system um, I'll probably try and do that in the next day or so and I might be able to answer at least see what's going on with the beta version right now over the weekend I'll be doing live uh, events here Saturday and Sunday as well hey Jim what's going on what you, how's, how's New York doing out there okay so so there's one other thing I want to show you guys and this is really cool um, you know again we know that a dam is going to be coming, a digital asset management is going to be coming to Luminar in early 2018, and that's going to allow us to organize all of our photos inside of Luminar, and that's going to be really cool. Um, I've been talking about how Luminar is you know, becoming more of a base solution and especially will be once we get that uh, that digital asset management but you know by coming up over here into the open in and bringing that to Photoshop you know that's you know keeping this as a base program check this out I gave a little tease on Facebook on this yesterday under plugins I already mentioned that we can go to uh, Aurora and intensify and tonality you know all the uh, creative kit things uh, plugins down here there's a little thing called choose plugin I'm only going to give you a little teaser on this. I'm going to be talking about this more, I think, tomorrow during a workflow. Uh, Google, Nick, Nick Software, um, you know, they have some free plugins that's uh, been really popular. I can go in here, and as long as you have a blue icon, uh, the blue plugin icon, you can click and select that and click on open. And again, I'm not going to show you the whole thing. I'm giving you a little bit of a teaser here today, but I'll just show you something right over here that I've been doing. And it now saves it in your recent recent. Uh, list over here so you can use Luminar to then use Photoshop plugins and then send them to Photoshop compatible plugins like uh, the Nick, like the Nick collection Silver Effects Pro Color Effects Pro when you do that it's gonna send it over into the program when you click apply it's gonna bring you right back into Luminar totally different than some other programs where you know it's sending it to the to the program kind of like over here open in you know that's actually sending a whole separate file to it and you know there's no way to go, get back but uh, this thing here, for those of you who have a lot of Photoshop plugins, you're gonna you're gonna be really cool and psyched about this new feature. So that's all the time I have for today's demo. I'm gonna take another quick peek and see if there's any other questions that came through. Uh, Jim is out in uh, PPE in New York with uh, with Mac Fun and uh, saying you know, having a great day at the show and a lot of interest in Skyloom. Skyloom's the new uh, the new name for Mac Fun. 
And uh, Elliot wants to ask, uh, can I cover background replacement? You know, that's um, not something that I'll be doing during the Luminar Lives. And I think uh, Jim Nix, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, he may have a video on Luminar or on uh, MacFun Skyloom's website that deals with that. So uh, take a look at that. And I'm sure Jim's, Jim's tuning in here, so he might be able to answer your question directly. Okay, any other questions, feel free to add them into the comments. And uh, thanks again for watching today. And I will be here tomorrow. Uh, it's already, there's already an event in the MacFun uh, group page for the time and the topic. And I'll see you guys then. Bye.